Hey, welcome back today to Wings Eagles of Ministry. We're, we're going to be doing just a little study for a few moments today on something that is probably not one of the most um, enjoyable topics to talk about out of the Word of God. But that topic is hell. And I realize today that there's a lot of viewpoints on hell. There's a lot of people that believe, uh, some people believe there's not a literal hell. Some people believe that you'll burn up and it'll be all over. But I'm just going to try to talk to you for a few minutes about what the Word of God teaches on hell. And actually, I just want to focus on one part today. We have a couple of other videos, and, and a lot of things I talk about, a lot of things I try to teach on, um, I'll try to put in a playlist. So we're going to have this one in a playlist as well. As um, I'm sure if you check out our playlist, you'll be able to see the one I'm talking about. And because this is just some lessons where we're teaching on hell. Uh, Jesus taught on hell, so it's not something he didn't want us to know. But the good news is, and this is good news, that no one has to go there. You know, the Bible said, whosoever will, let him come. So each and every individual today up on this earth, if you're watching this video, wherever you're watching this from, you can be right with God. You can be a part of the kingdom of God. You don't have to be lost, and that ought to be something that makes you shout today, that makes you say, praise the Lord. Now, the important thing is today, go ahead and act on that and come to the Lord Jesus. You say, well, I've got to feel the God draw me. I'm going to tell you something today. I don't know. I know a lot of people today get mixed up in what they think they're feeling uh, from God. And let me explain it to you like this. Uh, you watching this video is conviction. You watching uh, another video of someone else preaching or you listening to a song, you, you coming to the internet or social media to try to find something that would let you know that God loves you, that is God drawing you. Don't feel like God's going to come down, take you by the hand, and lead you somewhere. God is drawing you right now. So you watching this video, that is God drawing you. Okay, so again, the good news is no one has to be lost. No one has to go to hell. One of our videos, actually, that's already in that playlist talks about that if you go to hell, you will be going as an intruder because hell was not created for anyone. It was created for Satan and those that fell with him when he rebelled uh, in the very beginning. When Satan fell and was cast out of heaven, the Bible said he took a third of the angels with him. And that is who hell was created for. Uh, so anyone else? There's only one invitation given out in the Word of God, and that's to come to, uh, to be a part of the kingdom of God. Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. Uh, the Bible said, whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord. All of those are invitations. So there's no invitation. You don't see any invitation where anyone talks about coming to hell. Okay? No. All the invitations are going forth to you to be a part of God's kingdom. But it is a part of the Word of God. And obviously, for those that do not get their heart right with God, there are um, consequences. And the Bible said at the very end of time, the Bible said that I saw the dead, small, and great stand before God. And it said there's only going to be two groups of people, and that's the ones that are saved and the ones that are lost. Or, as sometimes you'll hear them phrased, the believers and the unbelievers. And so I want to read to you just a couple of verses out of this book of Luke, chapter number 16. And I want to talk to you today for just a few moments about one of the, and I titled this video, The Worst Part of Hell. Okay, is this the worst part of hell? Or something to that effect. However it is the video is titled, it probably got your attention. Okay, I'm not saying there's any part that's worse than another, okay? When we read about the torment, when we read about the eternal separation from God, all of those things cast into outer darkness, all of those things are terrible enough, okay? But I want to read to you something here. Uh, and this is where Jesus actually taught on hell just a little bit. And um, I'll never forget this actual passage because the very first night I went to the altar as a little kid. Well, I wasn't a little kid. I was a, you know, a younger boy, old enough to know what, what I was listening to. But the night I went to the altar for the first time, the preacher preached on this passage. And it stirred my heart. Okay. 
But I want you to listen to what it says in Luke chapter number 16, verse number 23. The Bible said, In being in torment in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Okay, now this is talking about the rich man. All right, the Bible here, we're talking about the rich man and Lazarus. He lifted up his eyes and he saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Okay, now you talk about the senses, you know, the seeing and, and taste and smell and touch. Okay, just listen to this. Here we see a, see a sense of seeing. The Bible said he saw Abraham. Okay, he lifted up his eyes in hell, but he saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Okay, he knew who Lazarus was. All right, because he knew Lazarus was the one. He was the beggar that had been out by the, by the gates all of his life. And he cried out and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger. Now listen to this. That he might dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Okay, a while ago we had seeing, now we're on to another sense. Here's taste. He just wanted one drop of water. Now notice what he said here. He said to dip the tip of his finger. All right, if he could just dip. Now I want to show you something here for a moment. This is a bottle of water. I love water. And I carry, I keep a bottle near me a lot of times. I've got one in here right now. Okay, the rich man did not cry out for a bottle. Do you notice that? He didn't cry out for a bottle of water. He cried out for the, re for if he said if he could take, if you could send Lazarus. Now he was asking now, the one that had been begging in his lifetime, he asked if that beggar could go and he could dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Okay, now are you getting the grasp of that right now? Now just think about this. This is a pretty little powerful thing that's really coming to me even as I'm talking because this isn't the main part of what I want to say. But Lazarus, can you, okay, we went recently to uh, a bigger city and uh, a few, a couple of weeks ago and we seen some homeless sitting out as we walked through the streets of that city, begging. I had one approach me, and these people, you know, obviously in the position they're in, you know, uh, they're not the kind of, you know, that would, if they would have said, here's a candy bar, here's a hamburger, eat it, you know, you probably wouldn't have because you knew that, you know, the condition that they had been in and come from. Here was the beggar, the one that had been sitting out there. He didn't worry about the condition. The, the rich man wasn't thinking about the condition. He wasn't thinking about that beggar that he had laid out there day after day after day begging. He wasn't thinking about whatever he might have, you know, maybe he hadn't got to, to go and wash his hands very much and, and maybe he was dirty sometimes when he would walk by and he would see him. He didn't think about any of that. He said, could you please have that man just dip the tip of his finger and put it on my tongue? He said, for I am tormented in this flame. For I am tormented tormented. There we get into the touch. The flames was tormenting this man's body. So we can see seeing, see the, the sense of seeing. He could taste, you know, touch. He said, I am tormented in this flame. Those are some powerful verses, but those aren't the verses I want to focus on right now. Again, I'm telling you, when I titled this video, I am not saying right now there is a worst part of hell. Because when again, when I say it, when, when you read about, when you read about this man, this rich man in this life, who wanted no part of God, 
But when the Bible said he lifted his eyes in hell, he was calling for the beggar to give him one drop of water on his tongue. He wasn't asking for a bottle. He just said, could you take your finger and dip it in there and put one drop on my tongue? Okay. But here's the verse I want to talk to you about in just a couple of minutes. And, and this, this video is all about this verse here. But Abraham said, son, there's the sense of hearing. Abraham was having a conversation with him. The rich man cried out and said, Father Abraham, here, Abraham heard him. And Abraham said, son, now listen to what he said. Remember that in your lifetime you received good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted in you. Are tormented. I want to go back to that first part of that verse where Abraham said, Remember that in your lifetime. Again, I'm not saying there's a worse part of hell. Eternal separation from God. Can you imagine what that would be to know you could no longer ever, 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 ever feel? the presence of God again. To know you could call out to the Lord all you wanted and he would never hear you. To know you could never feel that joy. You know you could never feel that longing. You could never feel that satisfying in your heart again like you once did. Do you realize today how bad that would be? Okay. That's beside the torment. That's beside the flames. That's beside the weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth that we read about. And I know some of you that are watching, you might be watching this video and you might say, well, I don't believe any of that. Well, I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. So if you want to argue with it, you know, don't argue with me. Just argue with the Word of God, okay? And you can say, well, I don't believe it or I believe it means something else. That's your call. It's up to you. I'm just going to tell you what it says, okay? But if you're watching and you do believe, and the Lord is dealing with your heart today, I want to tell you something. Those words we read just a moment ago, again, I'm not saying it's the worst part, but can you imagine? If it's not the worst, it would definitely, definitely be a very, very sad part of hell to realize that you would have your memory in hell. Abraham said, remember in your lifetime. Do you realize today I just said a while ago, I remembered the very first time that I went to the altar. It was on that, on that, a sermon on that many, many years ago. But can you imagine today people that maybe if they didn't get right with the Lord and they found their self in that position one day, they found their, their position one day where they stood before the Lord at the great white throne judgment. And the Lord said, depart from me. I never knew you. And the Bible said, when the saints of God will go ahead and inherit the new Jerusalem, and all that the Bible said, their names are not written in the book of life, were cast into the lake of fire. Okay, can you imagine the torment, the eternal separation from God, and the memory. Maybe you're remembering, maybe you would remember, or not hopefully you, but let's just say, let's just say someone else. Let's just say Johnny. Maybe Johnny would remember all the times that he was invited to church by a friend or family member. What about maybe when Johnny went to church some nights and he heard the preaching and he felt like he could feel something saying, why don't you come to the altar? He could feel the Spirit of the Lord drawing him and just seek me. You can be my child tonight. Johnny might have laughed it off and said, not tonight, Lord. Maybe someday, but not tonight. And remembering that. Can you imagine remembering Maybe going, being taken to a Bible school as a young child. And as you grew, you remembered those things, but you just put it off. Can you imagine 
Maybe starting out for the Lord one day. Maybe you was on fire for God. Maybe you used to be a teacher or a preacher or a song leader or just, just a good Christian person. But one day the devil distracted you. The devil got you to where you glanced off to the right or the left. And you went back on the Lord. And you never came back to him. You left the Father's house. And you went back into sin. And you never came back to God. Can you imagine remembering all that? Can you imagine remembering maybe a mother or a father saying, son or daughter, don't you think it's time that you get right with the Lord? Don't you realize what you can have in, in God if you, if you turn your heart over to Him? He'll help you through all the troubles. He'll help you through the trials. He'll help you through the, the, the suffering that you're going through, whatever it is you're going through right now. And maybe you just shake your head and say, No, I don't, I don't want to hear that. Or maybe, you know, you could be somebody today that has went even more stern a stern direction. Maybe you've mocked the people of God. Maybe you've mocked God in general. Maybe you've mocked the Word of God. But the Bible said one day we will have our remembrance. Or, let me say it like this, hopefully not us, but those, the Bible said, that are not right with God, the Bible said they will remember in hell he lifted up his eyes and Abraham said remember in your lifetime now if there was no possibility of remembering Abraham would never have said remember that but while he was begging for Lazarus and look look notice here notice here he said now notice this Verse 24, he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. He's tormented. He's begging. But notice what he said. He said, send Lazarus. He knew who Lazarus was. Did you get that? He knew who Lazarus was. He was tormented in the flames of hell. But the rich man knew who Lazarus was. And he remembered. And Abraham said, remember in your lifetime. So while I'm not saying one part is worse than the other, I will say it like this. One of the truly most agonizing parts of hell would have to be having your memory. However long, I don't know how long a person would have on this earth, but if you live to be 90 years old or, or 95 years old and you never got right with the Lord you would remember Lord I had all of those times oh God I had all of those times when I could have made things right with you God one more time God would you call upon me God one more time could I feel your spirit one more time God would you give me the call but you wouldn't feel nothing because you would be eternally separated from God and you would remember all of the times you spurned his mercy. All of the times you turned him away. All of the times you said, not now, Lord. Maybe someday. But someday never came. Having memory in hell. That would have to be a terrible, terrible, terrible part of hell for people to experience. Again, I want to close this video by saying, understand, I'm just teaching you what the Word of God says. You don't have to be depressed right now because the Bible said anyone can come to the Lord that wants to come to the Lord. Anyone can get forgiveness. You are alive today. You're breathing. You're watching this video. <laughs> Hallelujah. That right there tells you there's no reason you cannot give your heart to God. I know this video might not have been the most pleasant to talk about, but I believe it was a teaching that we needed to do as the Lord was laying it upon my heart. And, and he was actually dealing with me on this and talking about 
some of these things in my mind to me as I was talking to you. So I hope this video helped you. Remember today, God loves you. God bless you. Make sure you subscribe if you're new here. And we've got some good videos coming up later this week. Hope you're watching for them. Uh, we want to try to help those in Christ. We want to try to help guide people to Christ. We want to try to help people who come to Christ and help teach you. And then we want to try to help those that are down and depressed and let you know that with Christ you can make it. Remember, God loves you. God bless you. And we'll be looking for you on the next video.